of the Lord. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share my testimony of how God saved me and filled me with this precious gift of the Holy Ghost. That was in 1999. I can remember before then how um, I had my family and I just, I was walking in the house and I said, I asked this question to myself. I said, why do I feel so empty? You know, my family is okay. We're healthy. We're protected. You know, God has provided. But why do I still feel empty? And so I remember one day going to Rainbow Corn Laundry. That's in Memphis, Tennessee, where I used to live. And because I love to go to the thrift stores, Roman Sales, Goodwill. And so the Rainbow Corn Laundry was in the um, Memphis State area by Tiger Bookstore. So I remember going there. I think I went there to get, I don't know what I went there to get, but I went there one day and I met a lady that worked there named Diane Powell. And I knew something about this lady was, was different, you know. So me and her, we began to talk. And so we developed a friendship. God blessed us to have a friendship. And as I would go to the Goodwill, I would still sometimes stop and see how she doing at the Rainbow Corn Laundry. And pretty soon, she blessed me to get a job at the Rainbow Bow Corn Laundry. And she came to visit the church that I attended before. She came to my church, the church that I belonged to, I was a member of. She went there with me one day. And then I went to her church one day. And they was teaching on baptism in Jesus' name. And, you know, just different things like that that... I had never heard, you know, because I was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, you know. So then they was teaching that Jesus was God himself in the flesh. And I had never heard of it because I thought that it was like three different, you know, like Jesus right here, God, and then the Holy Ghost because I know God is a spirit. So I was like, show me in the Bible where it says these things. So they showed me the scriptures, you know. And things like that. Then they started uh, speaking on the Holy Ghost. And I knew deep down that, that I didn't have the Holy Ghost. And I wanted the Holy Ghost. So I remember one day I was at work. And I was asking the lady, you know, how she was doing. How somebody that she knew. And how they was doing. And so I heard the voice of the Lord. He said, deny thyself. Take up the cross. And follow me. And when I heard that voice, tears just came in my eyes. I mean, it just welled up in my eyes. And when I went home, I told my husband at the time, I said, God spoke to me. I heard him speak to me. I heard God's voice. He said, what did he say? I said, he said, deny thyself, take up the cross, follow me. He said, do you know what that means? I didn't know what all of that means. I didn't. I didn't know. So I remember... Um, that church that Sister Diane belonged to back to Pentecost Apostolic Church, they was taking a trip to Grand Bay, Alabama to go to Lighthouse Church. And so we was able to go with them, but Sister Diane, she had to stay and work, but she allowed her daughter, Princess, to go with us, my husband at the time, our um, David, my son David, my daughter Tamara, she was really young at the time. And so and David Friend went, and my sister nephew, Sean, he went also. So my uh, late husband, him and the boys, they shared a room. Me, Princess, and Tamara, we shared a room down in Grand Bay, Alabama. And, and so I remember going into the restroom, and I said, God, I want the Holy Ghost. God, please save me. Please save me. I was praying. And, um... Uh, and then when we went to the church, they said, if anybody want to be baptized in the name of Jesus, come to the front. And so I came to the front, but y'all, right now, I don't know how to swim. But God is going to bless me to learn how to swim. But I used to have nightmares of drowning. I mean, several times I done had nightmares. 
and I just I don't know how to swim so um I was kind of afraid to get baptized because of that fact so when they baptized me in the name of Jesus I fought with them to get back up. I said, ooh, ooh, ooh. it came up like that. I pushed it, it, came back up. And they said, sister, your whole body did not get wet. You got to go back down. And I said, this is not my real hair. This weave, it's not part of me. And uh, I said, this is weave. And they said, sister, you can't fight it. You got to go back down. And so it's like God gave me a peace. He gave me a peace like I was just resting in his arms and so they took me and baptized me again back they submerged my whole body in the water and they baptized me in the name of Jesus and when they and when they pulled me back up like help me raise back up they said call on Jesus just thank you Jesus they said call on Jesus and I just began to say thank you Jesus 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 I mean it was just like I was just thank you Jesus and then I just began to speak in tongues as the spirit gives utterance and God filled me at that time God had filled me with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and they say, do she got it? They said, she got it. And so I remember uh, Sister Diane, her daughter, Princess, she was baptized in the name of Jesus. And God filled her with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And I remember we went back to the room and we were just rejoicing in the Lord. We were so happy. And Princess was like, I still feel it, Tammy. I feel it. I said, oh, it feels so good. And so I remember I just had such good sleep. And I woke up in the wee hours in the morning and I seen Princess still sitting on the bed with tears in her eyes. And I looked at Princess, I said, Princess, are you still woke? She said, I still feel it, Timmy, I feel it, I feel it, Timmy, I feel it. It was like, God had just filled up with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And she was still so happy being full of the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. God is so good. And I remember when we came back home, as soon as Sister Diane opened that door and seen me and Princess face, she knew that God had filled us with the Holy Ghost and she wrote it in her book because it happened in November of 1999 and that was the best gift that we ever had before and so they had taught of uh, uh, in like the book of Acts 238 you know when um after the day of Pentecost had fully come and then when they was in the upper room and in the book of Acts the first part of Acts you know they said the Holy Ghost came in like a mighty rushing wind and it filled all that was in the room and they began to speak because of the see they was all in the room on one accord even the mother mary was in that room and and they was all on one accord and god filled them with the precious gift of the holy ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues is the spirit give utterance so peter he stood up and spoke because the men and brethren they had gathered from different parts of the world they was gathered there together and they seen them speak in tongues and praise god and they thought they was full of wine but you know mm -mm. peter told them we are not drunken with wine as you suppose but this is the holy ghost you see what i'm saying whereas the prophet joel spoke about and so um they asked him they said what must we do to be saved and in book of acts 238 he said repent each and every one of you for the remission of sin, you know, he said, repent and be baptized, each and every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you and to your children, and to them that are far off, as many as our Lord God shall call. So, I thank God for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. It is a gift for everyone that wants it. It is a gift from God and so I thank God for being baptized in the name of Jesus and being filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and that was the best gift that is the best gift I ever have it is the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and, and God just began to talk to me like never before you know he was just letting me know I love you just as you are and I was like God how can you love me just as I am? And I don't even love myself. And God was letting me know. He said, I love you. He said, I'm going to make you to a vessel of honor for my glory. And God taught me how to love myself. You know, I mean, it was just so amazing. And see, he let me know it's a process. We die daily. It's a process. And he's still working 
on me. He's still working on us. You know, it is a process. But I've noticed through the years, like when people ask me, even someone asked me from the church I used to belong to or whatever, when it comes to that baptism in Jesus' name, it's like it becomes a division. You know, when it comes to Jesus. When it comes to the name Jesus. You know, and so God, he will, He give me knowledge on how to help other people and to tell them about being baptized in Jesus' name. Because, you know, it was a lady that had been in Ursha for many years. She was asking me, like, what happened to you? Like, you know, and I was telling her that when I got baptized in Jesus' name, she said, well, it's all the same. What's the different? God knows, you know. And so, and she's a, a, a nurse. She, you know, work, um, do private duty nurse. So I asked her, I said, you know, because I know it's in the Bible, you know, it also um, reads in the Bible. You can see it in the Bible where it said, go and teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost. But we all know Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they are not names. So if I tell someone to go do this in my name, I'm not telling them to repeat what I said. I'm telling them to do what I said and speak my name you know and um so that is you know it's no other name given whereby we must be saved but the name of jesus christ you know because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord so you know i asked her i said like if if um you know you working somewhere and someone says um what do you want you know the person you working for asks you what name you want me to put on your check and you say put my name on it and they write on there put my name on it or else they write on there that woman she's a mama and they put all that on there they still ain't putting no name you can't cash the check because it ain't got your name on it you can't cash so i also you know i was letting her know because god let me know that when you speak the truth and you can compare it, you know, like when you speak the truth, the word will do the work. But that's where the division come in at. Even when you read in the Bible, they say, don't speak no more in this name. What's that name? It's Jesus Christ. Like I can say God all day long is no problem. But as soon as I speak on the name of Jesus, it's just like it's a spiritual warfare happens. It's like they don't want me to speak on that name. But it's so important uh that name jesus christ because it saves you and also how can you say that that name is not important jesus christ when sometimes people get upset if you say they name wrong i mean people they may say is that how you say your name you know what i told this lady i said it don't matter if you if you uh if you say my name the right way or not all that matter is you know jesus that name it is way more important than my name because my name can't save you only jesus can save you you see what i'm saying so it don't matter if you say my name wrong i'm not gonna get upset if you don't pronounce my name right because that ain't about nothing what matter is jesus christ that's what matter not if you pronounce my name right and all that it, it that don't matter because i am whoever god say i am that's who i am i'm who god say i am so no matter what somebody call me is what i answer to it don't matter what you call me because I am who, what God say I am. And so the name of Jesus, that's the name. And so also, you know, God even showed me like when people was, you know, getting upset about like, what difference does it make? I said, it's just like when you get married, don't you take on, usually not all people, but usually you take on your husband's name. Now, what if you had a marriage license and they said that woman, that man, and holy matrimony and don't put no name on it so do you think your name more important than jesus name you want your name on stuff but it don't matter what they call when you be baptized in jesus name yes it do matter you get mad you get baptized in the name of jesus for the remission remission of your sin jesus that name it does matter that name jesus it does matter and so um i thank god for being baptized in jesus name and i thank god for being filled with the precious gift of the holy ghost and uh, i thank god for the word of god when peter said repent and repent mean not just crying not just falling out screaming hollering not all not just emotions repent mean 
Instead of you doing it your way, you're going to do it God's way. It's change. Instead of you spending your whole life trying to do your own will, trying to fix something, make something be that ain't so, believe me, I tried it. Like doing it in my own way. And God showed me, I don't, no matter what you do, if it don't line up with the will of God, it ain't good. Like, and God can block some stuff. And you'll be so glad that he did. Because, and you'll be so glad that we don't even know what's best for us. But God knows what's best for us. So it's not our will, but let God's will be done. So I just thank God for being baptized in Jesus' name, and being filled with the Holy Ghost. And I thank God for my children being filled with the Holy Ghost. And that was my prayer that my children, my family, my loved ones, my friends, neighbors, as many as our Lord God should call. And that is the great commission, is to witness of Jesus Christ. And that is the great commission. And to even tell your testimony of how God saved you. Because the way I used to be, God still loved me enough to save me because a sinner, a sinner, God saved me. A sinner, but that I'm gonna shine up. A sinner, God saved me. I got pregnant at the age of 13. I had my first child at the age of 13. I mean, I did uh, sinful things, bad things, but God still loved me. That's why I was. That's one of the reasons it was so hard for me to love myself from me being sexually abused and then me. Uh, doing bad things and choosing like God how can you still love me but you know God let me know how he just loved me and all of us with an everlasting love because God is not like man and this is what God let me know he said imagine a man that's finna marry a woman and before he even asked her to marry her he already see all the times that this woman is going to cheat on him he see every time he see the details and everything he right there looking at it he can see it plainly how many times she was going to cheat on him how many times she was going to betray him all of that he seen every time she did that but yet and still that did not change his love for this lady so you know what he did he went and asked can you be my wife? Can you marry me? Even though he seen all the stuff she was going to do, can you marry me? And you know what God said? That is what he did for us. While we was yet sinners, he know every time we were going to sin, he know every bad thing we were ever going to do. While we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. And it said for the joy set before him, he endured the cross despising the shame he still went to the cross because that's just how much he loved us and nothing could separate us from the love of god and yet and still he still died for us and you know the angels they even asked the question what is man that i am mindful of him and the son of man that thou visited him because you made him a little lord than the angels yeah you have crowned him because then i'm gonna see y'all thank you lord you know they asking the question why you love man so much even the devil, the accuser said, you died for them and they don't even want to serve you. They doing this and that. Some of them going over here, some of them going over there. And you died for them. You suffer like no man could ever suffer. You suffer more than anybody ever suffer for anyone. For these people, you died for them. For the whole world. And God let me know, I love you. I love you. I love you. And then when I ask God, forgive me, he said, I will abundantly pardon you. Because God is not like man. He said he throw it into the sea of forgiveness. He won't even bring it up to your account no more. Say, you know you did this, you know you did this. He'll throw it into the sea of forgiveness. Because that's just how much he loves us. So God, he was letting me know about how much that he loves me. You know, and so... The promises to us that if we only believe, and Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So I am a witness that God's word is true. That God filled me with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance in his power. And that means my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. 
everyone that's been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. And the Holy Ghost is sealed. God is not like man. He said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. Don't it feel so good to know that you will not be abandoned? God said he will never leave you. No matter what men say, no matter what men say, God say, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. Don't that feel good to know that you can wake up, you ain't got to worry about somebody getting so mad at you, they pack their bags, they go, they leave you, or, or some people's own mother and fathers have left them, or, or whatever the case is. But to know that God will never, never leave you, he right there with you. Wherever you go, the people that's thrown in jail, guess what? Even, even my own child went to jail. Guess what? I didn't serve time for him. I didn't go in there and get locked behind them bars. I went to visit him, but I didn't want to take his place to serve time for him. But guess what? God was right there with him. God took it right there with him. God was right there with him every step of the way. When he was thrown in the hole, God was right there. Wherever you at, when, when you're going into the operating room, God is with you. You know, it's only a point that your own mom and daddy, your sister and brother, your, your husband and wife, they can't go with you to a certain point. When they pull, when they push, 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 that operating table in that room and close them doors. But guess what? God go right there. He, he in there with you. He everywhere at the same time. I'm not present with you. And God said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. Everywhere you go, God is there. And that will give you the consolation to know that God is with you every step of the way. And I, I really just wanted to share that testimony of how God filled me with the Holy Ghost because it's the greatest gift. The Holy Ghost have power, 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 power to tread upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. God give unto us power in the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the precious, and that's the precious gift. The most precious gift in the whole world is the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a comforter. It comforts you in the time that you need comforting. I mean, it's right there. The Holy Ghost will, will reveal all truth. The Spirit will reveal truth to you. It'll lead and direct you. God will not force you now to do right because it's your choice. He's not going to force you. But he will help you because you will have power over sin. Sin, you will not be a slave to sin anymore. You're not, you will not be a slave to it. You will have power over it. You can resist the devil. He'll flee from you. But that don't mean he ain't going to come back and try to tempt you again. But you have to put the whole arm of God on. So I just want to um, encourage each and every one of you. That is the main thing. That is the most important of our lives that is the most important decision that we will ever make in our life is the decision to be saved to open the door of our heart and to repent and to be baptized every one of us in the name of jesus and to be filled with the precious gift of the holy ghost and it's not a debate it's not a debate of this dead it's not none of it it's not no debate because god is god it's not no debate about how you do it, this is, is not any kind of debate because some people get filled with the Holy Ghost even before they go and get baptized in the name of Jesus. Some people get baptized in the name of Jesus, then get filled with the Holy Ghost. Some people can get filled with the Holy Ghost right in their house when they praying, praying, praying. God can fill them in their car, in the park, wherever he want to fill them in. In, the, in jail, God is God. It, it's, the enemy will use anything to try to debate so people can just argue about this debt 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 it's not a debate that's why god will let you know like when whoever trying to debate whether the christian the muslims and all these people trying to fight trying to debate on the truth and this and that you know what the word of god say every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord jesus is lord so no matter how much you fight 
no matter how much the rumors of wars, no matter how what people try to do, no matter the enemy will try to get people upset with each other because he don't want us in unity. Because he knows where his unity is strength when we can come together. But if he can get you divided, fighting about this life matter, all of that stuff, everybody in the world life matter, no matter what color you is. So, but I'm just telling you, but if he can get people to debate and not see what's really going on, that this is the end time, the scriptures being fulfilled, the new world order they trying to usher in and they don't want us to know about that so what they trying to do is keep us divided arguing about stuff that really don't matter and they trying to keep you um your mind distracted in other things so that's why even like my children i sometimes i get them off of the playstation 4 off of all of whatever movies going on off of a lot of these technology stuff TikTok, you know that don't mean they won't get on there forever but sometimes you know we designate a time like don't get on it because we know the enemy i know the enemy is trying to distract us with what all of that and we don't need to be distracted with that we need to watch and pray and see what's 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 going on in this world that the end time will be here soon jesus is on his way back so we need to prepare ourselves do a self-examination not stirring and examining everybody else examine our own self and, and see what we seek god with our whole heart we need to start seeking god every day it shouldn't be a day to go by that we don't seek god we don't need to seek after all these things we need to seek god first seek god first not all this stuff. Somebody want to look at all these movies. I'm not saying movies wrong, but I'm saying like if you're doing all of these things, seek God first. Seek God first. Get away from the distractions and seek God first every day. Every day, seek God first and pray, pray, pray. God is your first love. Start talking to God. Cast all your cares unto God and he will help you day by day. And I want y'all to be blessed and I thank y'all for listening to me and i just want to pray for each and every one of you i just thank you god for my whole family i thank you lord for everything i thank you lord for the holy ghost i thank you lord for life and life more abundantly i thank you lord god for your word for you waking us up this morning for you watching over us keeping us safe from our hurt, harm, and danger. I ask you, Lord, to comfort. Comfort. Brother number two, see how but all shine. Comfort, Lord. Comfort all those that mourn, Lord. Comfort, Lord. Comfort my friend Shelly, Lord. Comfort Kaylee, Lord. Father, comfort, Lord. Comfort, Lord. Trinica, Lord. Comfort my family, Lord. Oh, Lord. Comfort my whole family, Lord. Comfort all those that lost loved ones, Lord. Father, comfort the Christians, Lord. Overseas that's being persecuted for your name's sake, Lord. Comfort them, Lord. Comfort each and every one that lost loved ones, Lord. Oh, Lord, and bless that we will help each other and love each other, Lord. And Lord, order our steps, God. In Jesus' name, God, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen.